In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'd like to start a little series, at least two sermons, on the Holy Mass. The Holy Mass is provided for us so that we will be able to conform to Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's our job in this life, is to conform to Christ. He wants us to restore all things in Christ, in Himself. We're not evolving. We are to be conforming, conforming to Christ. There's no evolution. It's a matter of confirmation, conformity. So we need to be exposed to Christ's life, to his mysteries, and even to Christ himself to make this possible. Thus, the Mass is a certain recapitulation of the life of Christ. It enables us to be exposed to Christ and to conform ourselves to him. That's what's so beautiful about this Mass is that it's very strict. I have to conform myself to the Mass. I don't conform the Mass to myself. Let's start in the sacristy, vesting. What's the priest doing? He's conforming himself to Christ and him crucified. He's vesting himself to look like Christ on Good Friday in a certain sense, in symbolic form. So what's the priest doing in the sacristy? Well, he puts on the amis, that's the blindfold. He puts on the alb, that's the white seamless garment. He puts on the cincture, that's the scourging. And that Jesus was bound. He puts on a stole to be led away like a slave. He puts on the chasuble, that's the garment that Herod threw on Christ. The one that the soldiers divided into four parts. And he puts on the maniple to remind himself that he is on the cross to be praying and interceding through the whole Mass. If you remember the story of Moses on the mountain, he had to keep his arms up. As long as he kept his arms up, Joshua would win the battle down below. That's why he's got that maniple on. He is interceding. All of these have something to do with Good Friday. The priest is seeking to conform himself to Christ and him crucified. We can also piously think of the sacristy as being sort of like the womb of the Blessed Virgin. Just as Christ took on his human nature and was vested with his human nature to come out and die on Calvary, the priest is, as it were, putting on Christ to process out and die on the cross at the Mass. It's a good time to pray the rosary while the priest is vesting. Very fitting. So the Mass is very precise. It does not change. It does not evolve. We can form ourselves to it. We do not make the Mass conform to us again. Well, let's go to the prayers at the foot of the altar. Well, that's St. John the Baptist. He's preceded our Lord and preached repentance to prepare for his coming. Thus, to prepare for the coming of Christ at Mass, we pray the prayers at the foot of the altar. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa, we repent. It's St. John the Baptist preaching repentance and we get absolution. Then comes the introit. He ascends the altar and he makes the sign of the cross in silence. That's the Annunciation. That's the Incarnation. He enters the world in a mystery. That's why it's silent. The work of the Most Holy Trinity, the Incarnation. Then there's the Kyrie. Three sets of three. Three sets. One set for the Father, one set for the Son, one set for the Holy Ghost. Three in each set to indicate that they mutually indwell in each other. And the fancy Greek word for that is perichoresis, mutual indwelling. So when Christ comes, 
he reveals the Father because the Father and he are one. When Christ comes, he sends the Holy Ghost because he and the Holy Ghost are one. Then we have the Nativity with the Gloria, even though we don't say it in Lent. Christ then comes out of the virginal womb and receives our prayers, which is the collect. He gathers all our prayers and places them on the altar, our gateway to the cross and heaven. Notice that as we make our way to Calvary, the priest, when he's praying, always holds his hands apart to indicate that these prayers will only be answered through the crucifixion, which is the perfect prayer of Jesus to the Father. A prayer united with suffering. The perfect sacrifice. The perfect prayer. Next we hear the word of God. He came to speak to us through others. That's why we have a lesson. And then from his own lips in the gospel. Like the Sermon on the Mount, we sit and hear the word of God taught to us in the sermon, if there is one. Then the faithful respond by professing their faith, the creed. Thus, in the first part of the Mass, the Mass of the Catechumens, we say, we have recapitulated the beginning of Christ's life and his public ministry. Let us end there today, and tomorrow we'll pick it up with the Mass of the Faithful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.